Hello everybody, it's Graham Cave with another My Music Now. It's uh, in the UK, it's just gone five o'clock, uh, which for, for many of you, if you've been working all day and you've been struggling with spreadsheets and things like that, may feel a bit like the end of the world, uh, which is a nice segue into talking about the new album uh, that Peter here, my guest today, uh, has recently produced. And we'll be talking to him in a minute, straight after this. Peter, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed that little uh, video there, um, celebrating uh, independent music, um, awesome. which is yeah. which is incredibly important, as you and I both know. Um, an album from Pete International Airport, which I feel actually should be the name of an airport somewhere in the world. Um, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> if you if you could choose, because you you must have travelled a fair bit in your time musically. Just a, yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you could place Pete International Airport somewhere in the world, where would you like to place it? Um, nobody's asked that question before. There uh, you go. I, I would hope it would be somewhere uh, in in Europe. Uh, maybe maybe slightly northern Europe, but not completely. Uh, okay. Uh, somewhere, somewhere in the Holland or Belgium area. Oh, Holland. Well, yeah, maybe maybe yeah. if so. If we're going Holland, um, do, you, do you have a particular do you have a particular part of Holland you like? I quite like uh, the kind of swallow area. So kind of northern Holland, a little bit away from. Amsterdam, that sort of area, just just really yeah. nice people in Holland. Yeah, really. it's I, I mean, I have a really hard time when when people say what's your favorite country, favorite city, all that, because um, it's kind of all amazing. Um, but sure, that sounds good to me. Yeah, and would Pete <laughs> Pete International Airport just holding on that thought for a second as well? Would Pete International Airport have all the whistles and bells like you get in a big big international airport um or you know or would it be a little bit more heath robinson you know when you travel to some of those countries and like the same guy is the guy that sort of checks you in and then finds uh -huh. your luggage <laughs> yeah. probably a little bit more like that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh brilliant is that is that what life is like for you sometimes when you're 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 creating what you're doing? Yeah, it's I've essentially out of necessity had to learn how to to be a recording engineer and um, that just sort of led into the producing part and uh, programming synths and drum machines and just yeah, every, essentially everything. Um, just because I either didn't know people or I couldn't afford to, um, you know, get studio time and hire, hire everybody. Um, and yeah, that's just what's happened. All of a sudden yeah. I'm wearing, wearing many hats. Yeah. Um, or many bandanas, depending on from which I, way you look at it. To the, today bandanas. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which, which of the bits has come least naturally to you? Uh, I don't, none of them really. None of them. Oh right. So right. so you've actually found them all relatively easy, but it's just turning your well, hand to it. It's just it's yeah. I mean, I don't know that I'm a, a particularly good like engineer or anything, but I enjoy it. So it's like fun, like figuring things out. Um, well, then who cares? Um, 
<laughs> yeah, but it's just like all, all of every every extra hat takes away from doing the thing that I really love, which is just the playing of music um, yeah. or create or creating of it. Um, luckily, some of that sort of blends together, but um, yeah. Would you find it? Would you find it more fun if somebody else asked you to do it for them than the, when you've got to do it for you? In other words, uh, if if it was if it was a creative if that creative process of doing the production or doing the engineering or doing something was part of you were do, you were doing it for someone else, so therefore you had like you didn't have you didn't worry about the, the writing of the song or, or right. whatever would you would you then look at it differently um just, slightly just trying to understand the peter psyche mm. here <laughs> i i i have done that with with um sort of taking on like the producer hat for a couple things and um i i enjoy it yeah um it's i don't know i guess i'm a bit of a control freak so i from I enjoy it the most when I get to kind of control the whole the whole thing. Um, but you know, working in bands, you know, sometimes you don't get to do everything you want, and it ends up being way better. So now, listen, listen, Peter. It's always lovely when someone says thank you, isn't it? So it is, let's yeah. let's start with that. Kevin, <laughs> who's listening, I uh, said. Uh, he just wants to thank you for stopping by and playing Stockholm last year. Ah, yeah, that's nice, isn't it? It had been a it had been a long time since we had played there, um, so it was nice to be back. Do you do you sometimes feel that? I mean, we're going to talk about this album, and and there's an element with which this album is kind of COVIDy, which if if oh. <laughs> Sorry about that. Or kind of related to the to the period that we all went through uh, with COVID. Um, yeah. But for me, that kind of it, certainly in England, that kind of started before COVID with with Brexit as well, which has here made it incredibly difficult for musicians to then travel. Uh, yeah. If we're, we're going to get on our political high horse for a minute, which I will because I don't mind. Um, do you? Is there anywhere where you now feel is is more difficult to play because of things that have happened in the world and you kind of feel a bit aggrieved about that? Um, I don't... Well, everything just got more difficult. Like, the whole... Um, because of the pandemic, everybody kind of lost their little cushion of funds to you know to sort of rely on and get you through the um and for me it's like i was kind of i don't know i just sort of would pay for everything and just like take my take um a pia on tour and it didn't matter if it was making money it was just i was going to do that um because mm. i enjoy it and i i want to, to try and make it bigger you know and just do that that do that work um and now i really can't do that because uh reality set in i guess yeah yeah no and absolutely it was a yeah i haven't haven't gotten over that yet <laughs> and i don't mean any i don't reality, think anybody had yeah and reality just keeps happening <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. My little bubble anymore yeah, I, I, but I, I, it's a, it's a, it is a funny world that we're living in at the moment, where everything's mm. prices are inflating all the time in every single area, um, yeah. and it means that people have to kind of find a way to re redo things that they would have done in a, you know, without thinking necessarily in a particular way. Did you yeah. feel in a way that there's now's the time more than ever for creatives to to really kind of dig deep in terms of finding those different ways though 
and and being more creative in terms of the way that you actually get stuff out there and, and do things because you know that in a way that's always been part of the creative process as well is not just producing Absolutely, the art but yeah. actually getting it out yeah and that's i think the part that a lot of us really struggle with um it's um it's easy to get your music out there um or video or you know whatever it is um it's hard to get anybody to pay attention to it because there's so many you know people doing it so yeah uh i guess that's that's where we need to be creative it's like um as how how to get noticed yeah it's it's fun well it's it, it's fine for someone like me because I, I i work with cre- it's trying to get creative with them but i think that's it yeah. is is sort of creating new sort of relationships and new sort of collaborations with other creatives is that is is for you is that part and parcel of trying to to navigate that um i yeah for sure um it's also um it's also something i just really really love doing like the the working with other people the the collaboration part is 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 where kind of the magic really happens um yeah you know that's why pretty much that's why i like working with like different different singers on on different tracks um because they will change the whole song completely just by you know a, a melody or word choice and it's just really cool are you quite when that happens are you are you quite open to that all of the time is there ever a time where oh it... god no <laughs> okay <laughs> i i always have i got that scream distinct... i want it this way <laughs> Yeah, well, it's always you have to you have to try and figure out what it was that they saw in your song that made them think that it needed yeah. to go that direction, and sometimes it takes a while. Yeah, um, are you I, I, okay? Are you are you openly honest about it, or do you? Because again, it, let's talk about sort of personality here, or do you prefer to sort of suck it up? have to go away into a corner and go and then come back once you've considered what what the other person is trying to do and go okay i'm kind of ready to talk about this now (laughs) (laughs) um a lot of times it's just i just have to play it over and over again and 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 let it let my idea of it kind of drift away and and hear it for what it really is um and sometimes it's easier than others but it's all mm. like every single time it's like wait a second what what is that um it's just just part of part of my process i guess well i'm going to ask you to be really honest here now then we're, we're, yeah, oh, okay talk to me <laughs> talk to me talk to me about a track where it was really difficult but actually you came full circle on it and and you ended up realizing that this was the best thing for the piece of music and now you absolutely love it in that that form um god i mean honestly the one that was the the uh that was the most like that was was on my last record um uh and it was just something that my friend jason russo had 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 sent me the song's called love in reverse uh it i just didn't get what he was doing at all um and i Bye, thought Jason. it was it, <laughs> <laughs> oh no no, no I'm, I'm i'm sure he's he's aware of that um <laughs> but but yeah it it's um i had thought it was a much darker song and he brought a lightness to it that that was that it needed actually um mm. and it it really it took playing it for my wife for her, for me to go oh she really likes it why you know and then 
kind of had to stop and think about that and, and, and listen to, to what was going on. Yeah. yeah. The more you think and, about that as a process, then do, do you, do you begin to over the years as you've written songs and that's, that's happened. Do you begin to think of songs almost like conversations then? Uh, I no, I, I don't think I don't really think about them that way. Uh, okay, so what are songs? <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't know if I think about them in any particular term. It's always just it's just this. Um, it's just an obsession of a sort that I'm you know, that's constantly going through my head, you know, ideas will pop up, um, people to work with will pop up and, you know, it's like kind of muddle through them and then sometimes try them out. Sometimes the idea just goes away, new ideas pop up, um, until it's done, you know, until it's, it's done. Yeah. And sometimes that takes, years I've, I've got things that I've been working on on and off for decades at this point and at some is there, point well is there, is there is there a song that's eluded you so far then that you, that's been an obsession that you've you've kind of held on to it in some shape or oh form, yeah it's absolutely never... yeah yeah um my <laughs> I've got <laughs> essentially I've got a file um in you know for whatever record I'm working on that's uh, a folder that's got all the different ideas from everything in the past. And, and then every time there's a new idea, it gets put in there. And then as soon as I get the 11 songs that make up my record, all the unused ideas just go into the next folder. And, you know, I'll go through and open them up every so often. And, and if something, you know, if it's inspiring to keep working on it, I'll, I'll, I'll start or, yeah well sometimes sometimes it will never get there will it because i guess sometimes oh, yeah, just an idea then just sparks another idea and then you're off with that idea and then that idea still gets left behind yep yep for sure you know um maybe one this, day this, we'll, yeah we'll get them all out you know, <laughs> <laughs> i well in, uh, in that case then i've actually stopped coming up with ideas you know and that wouldn't be a good thing. No, exactly. Yeah. But on, yeah, well, on the new will, record... Be... Yeah, go on. Oh, so on the new record, there's the song, The Watermark, um, was yep. something that, that Daniel Sparks, the, the singer on, on the song, um, that he and I had had... Uh, we probably wrote it, like, oh, I don't know, 15 years ago. Like, the seed of it. And then it kind of finally like came became, became whatever whatever the hell it is, you know. Wow, fifteen years. It's, yeah, it was something yeah. that I always liked, but it's like it had it had the wrong lyrics, and it had a lot of guitars, and kind of stripped all that out, and and went back to the the initial thing that was was interesting about it. And, and built it up again. Uh, that process of that particular song has happened a couple times, so it finally made it. Yeah, I, I guess that's I, I guess that's the same for a lot of people that write songs. Is that sometimes you end up sort of adding to an initial idea mm -hmm. and almost confuddling the initial bit because you've layered these other ideas on the top of it and sometimes you just have to go back to what it was in the first place that was so interesting about that initial idea and you've kind of buried yeah. that somewhere oh yeah oh yeah yeah but did you with you know covid and lockdown etc did you have more time like most of us than, than ever oh, before yeah. to actually dive back into those wonderful archives and yeah so is that how, um, how much of an impact's that been on this particular record 
the the I was completely ready to just go hide in my studio for months on end and being being allowed to do that was amazing um mm. i i had I, I hit an incredible creative streak and it's just i i don't think i've ever produced that much um music you know ever it was really amazing um besides doing my record i did a, a record with a friend um called uh the project's called sun adams um i did another record with another friend and did a record with the dandies plus we did uh, we were doing a like a short song every week um for over a year so it was crazy the amount of the amount of uh content <laughs> that was coming out i don't think i don't think any any of us will ever want to go through pandemic again no but i but, but i do I, think I, but i do think a lot of people will or are looking back on those times of being restricted but at the same time being liberated away from mm -hmm. the pace of modern life uh, and yeah. going god that was amazing in terms of the freedom it gave to explore those bits of oneself or to explore as you say you know being able to do stuff that nobody else did before i mean it's amazing how many artists i've had on here who wouldn't have ever been artists if it hadn't been oh wow for COVID. Yeah. yeah yeah because they literally their life was on a trajectory of this and then suddenly that stopped and they went hang on a minute what stop the bus what am i actually doing here mm -hmm. I, yeah. I always wanted to do this and i just didn't do it you know how yeah. how 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 do you feel that you know because some of that's reflected in this album how how do you feel that people will look back in say 20 years time and on that whole period or this whole period and and reflect uh, that's a good question um I mean, it, it. There was so much going on that was really, really unpleasant that I'm not mm. sure people will ever look on it, you know, like all that fondly. Um, but you know, a lot of amazing stuff happens within it. Um, hopefully, I don't know. Hopefully, we see that positive stuff after all the other crap we're going through now uh, settles. But. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's so weird, be... like how 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 horrible everything was. And it's like I really just sort of put my head down and kind of turned off the news and didn't pay any attention to anything. Well, I was going to ask really... you that. I, I was going to ask you how how aware, in a way, because it sounds like you may not have been. How aware were you of everything that was going on? Because actually, if it sounded like it was an opportunity for you to kind of literally create yeah. that bubble and i and i realized really yeah i really i realized really quickly that that i couldn't do anything about it and if i dwelt on it i would do nothing except worry about how everything had gone to shit um mm. and so i just you know turned off all news sources and um just tried to channel everything into you know playing music i i set up a, a little routine and kind of stuck with it and it it worked really really well um up until god like about september end of september when with besides all the covid black lives matter riots the mm. uh the election thing that was going on uh 
we got crazy like forest fires like really close to us and so the whole city was just like smoke filled it's like you couldn't see like the you know across the street and that's pretty much when i had my little meltdown and like reality set in <laughs> but up until that i had just been like it completely fine just like not knowing anything Taking it back to uh, Pete's International Airport, which is the name of the project. Are you are you one for those public spaces? Because I, I, in a way, hear me out on this. Having spent myself yeah. a fair bit of time both in service stations and and. Uh, airports and and those kind of places i i i i feel there's parallels between those kind of when you're in those places and what kind of happened through covid as well because you you kind of sit yeah. there and the world just goes by mm -hmm. but yeah, you're in your own, but you are in your own little bubble and you kind of have to um you kind of have to just observe and and stay in your little bubble. It's, it, does that make sense to you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, don't don't particularly think about that much when when I'm going through those spaces. But yeah, it, it definitely fits. Yeah. So actually, it's a really great name for <laughs> mm. for this yeah, as a project. And yeah, it's a, a lot of people. Have, it yeah, it be, sort of became the name, the the way the project works. Initially, it was not an in, international uh, airport. It was very very local, um, but the the last record and this one have kind of spread out to people all over all over the world even. Um, and I yeah, I just went. I I want the next one to go farther, and I've contemplated asking people to sing in different languages if they happen wow. to know them because i i really like that idea um but then you've then, got the, then you've got the fun of actually making sure that what they've say say they've sung is what they say <laughs> uh, yeah i'm i'm could you, really could you just check that. this for me and make sure that that uh -huh. is what they say yeah <laughs> I'm really particular about about the people I work with. Um, I it has they have to be like lyrically very interesting. Um, if yeah, it, it's it's huge, hugely important. Yeah. Um, and so that's pretty much how I I pick people. If I like if I like the voice and the lyrics of their other projects, then. And then I will approach them and ask yeah. if they're interested. Um, so you're not, even if they can, you know, sing in the most wonderful uh, foreign language, etc. Uh, if if they're if the their kind of lyrics will be about, you know, I'm a Barbie girl, then it ain't happening. Yeah, no, yeah. definitely not. No, I, exactly. I, I like, yeah, I like the sort of amb. I like it so that you can come up with your um, interpretation, you know, so, yeah. Um, I mean, that happens anyway, but the more, so I guess more poetic and um, open the, the lyrics are, the more you can get out of them personally. Well, Pete, Thanks for yeah. talking to us today. One final question, which is one one of the okay. songs on there. Song seven is uh, the faults you won't think. Uh -huh. Yeah. What 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 are what are the faults that we shouldn't be thinking? Oh, I think there's probably lots we shouldn't be thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What 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 is that song? What's what's that song particularly about? I'm, I'm not really sure. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, my friend, that's, the, uh, it's funny you brought that one up. Uh, that's, uh, Jason Russo, the, the 
the guy that I was talking about, about on the last record. Um, his uh, he's been doing a lot of really cool um, sort of I guess it's poetry, um, and he he just puts uh, he likes putting words in different different orders and and a lot of repetition and then ideas. It's quite abstract. Yes, and his his poetry stuff is amazing and his uh what he he does stuff on twitter too and has quite a big following um it's just wordplay and it's so yeah. so much fun um he goes his handle is uh retsor which is rooster backwards and it's super fun and this well, this the the lyrics in this song are are really like he's taken that and and worked them into a you know a song i it's, gathered that yeah. yeah so what i think would be fun as a as a piece of uh as a piece of social um content out there and and folks if you're listening would be to listen to uh song seven the thoughts you won't think mm-hmm. in fact please do listen to the whole of the album and because <laughs> i know nice. Yes, because I know for a fact that when you tell people, because it's part of what I do every day on on social media, but I know that when you tell people uh, that these are these are the faults you won't think, and then you give them some abstraction, they will think of something, you know, mm-hmm. because almost as human beings, if we tell people not to do something, they will do something, uh, which is which is. The wonderful paradigm of uh, of the human brain. So please, um, when you've listened to that song, tell us what what it is that you are thinking of, um, and then we we can gather together the thoughts that you did think when you weren't thinking of those thoughts. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and we can have we, Pete, me and Peter can have great fun reading that back. So uh, yeah, please do get interactive with that and uh, and and listen to that. Um, brilliant album. Thank you so much for sharing it with me um 11 songs uh well worth a listen folks if you haven't heard it yet uh it felt like the end of the world um that's not the same uh feeling that you get when you go to the local supermarket and they run out of donuts that's 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 not that's not the end of the world so sorry to tell you um that's just (laughs) you being over, over dramatic uh but this album really does feel like it's a feeling about Mm. it could be the end of the world but it's it's not it's not it's not negative in any shape or form it's not it's it's not it's not that at all uh there's a definite light at the end of the tunnel um but we'd love to hear your views peter holmstrom thank you very much for coming and talking to me today it's been an absolute pleasure um please do check out peter's music uh buy it as well my god i mean uh, yeah, you know that would, in that this day help. and age what a what a shock that, that would be to to actually open your purse and spend <laughs> some money uh if you could do that that would be wonderful because music as i've said time after time on the show does not actually grow on trees uh like some people think it does or just emit from the black dot in the corner of the room um and if you've enjoyed this <laughs> please share it with your friends uh, if you haven't enjoyed it then tough You're an idiot and just go away. Um, Until next time, bye for now.